Hello there again, everybody. This is not going to be a Jund League. I am instead going to be trying to qualify for the February 2021 Mana Trader series, which is modern. What's up, Dalton? Um, have not yet played any matches with it, um, and the qualification period ends in I think three or four days, and I just now um, realized that it was it was modern this month. So hopefully, I'm not too late. I know a lot of people have already qualified. And uh, I, I'm not going to be super upset if I don't qualify because I'm fairly, cer fairly certain I am busy uh, the weekend of the actual tournament, which is not this upcoming Saturday in a few days, but the one after that. Um, but I mean, I'm going to see. I'm, I'm going to see if I can qualify in the off chance that I do get to play it. And it'll also be a nice little shake up because I, I would suspect that people who are attempting to qualify for the Mana Trader series are going to be trying to play the best decks that they can because the goal here is to really, really win. Um, there's not really any people, probably not any people trying any like brews or anything like that. So this is probably more representative of a uh, of the competitive modern format. So that said, we're gonna we're gonna take this meta game breakdown with with an even smaller grain of salt than we usually do. Um, so today is the 19th of February, and this is what we expect to see from a, uh, a uh, league perspective. Um, might not be that uh, dissimilar from like more competitive mana traders play, but this, this is what we expect to see. Bogle is actually making an appearance. That's, that's kind of funny. All right, so... <laughs> hey, I have I have my uh my moments. <laughs> All right. Let's uh let, let's actually play now. <laughs> All right. Uh we're playing against Amulet Titan looks like uh, I think I'm gonna take the grazer here. Just try to slow down the opponent as much as possible. I would love to Tarmogoyfe on turn two, but then I'm not taking the explore. The opponent getting that extra land into a play into play is kind of buying me just as much time as one fewer attack. So I think I do actually like just getting the Goyf into play because ne next turn maybe I can double spell with like a Thought Seize and another Tarmogoyfe, which would be nice. Yeah, I gotta take the better Mox Diamond. Yeah, I know, I know what you meant. Don't worry. Castle Garenbrig, that's a new one. Explore. Bouncy Land, yep. Alright, so they've got forests in addition to all this. So, untapped land would be good. Not quite. They're not at Titan mana yet, so I think I want to continue applying more pressure, which means second Tarmogoyf. And then next turn, um, the turn after next turn is, is like their pre-Titan turn. So by then, hopefully they'll have only got one copy. So this is gonna be a matchup where I'm pretty happy that I've got um, two copies of Damping Sphere. So, any untapped green lands means that they have six mana for Titan. We know they've got Forest in hand. So while I would love to play Dark Confidant, I believe I have to use this moment to Thought Seize. Make sure I don't just die immediately. 
All right, well, they've unfortunately got two copies of Titan, so I guess I'll take the one that they have to use the... they so that they have to actually use the Pact. Like, I could have taken the Instant just so, uh... Glaive's hit for an additional two damage total. But this way, at least my opponent's next turn is kind of used. And not not having lands here means that not even Liliana is an out, unfortunately. Pulse, same, same, same thing, not an out. And there's the pulse. So Glyphs are four fives. If I attack, it's possible that the opponent cannot block because they have to be afraid of a lightning bolt. And it's going to be pretty important that their Titan stays alive. So I may be able to uh, get an attack in here. In which case, I think I'm pushing the plant because then it'll force them to either block or not block with Titan. It's, I think, a gamble I have to make. If they trade, it's unfortunate. But I just don't have a better play. Okay. You caught me. So I mean I do get to pulse the uh the prime time. Oh that's that makes me nervous. It's gonna be pretty bad for me. Not just dead yet, I can still find my untapped land. Um they can potentially double strike this thing though, which has me going to one. So it would have to be a a painless way to do it. They're just making another plant here, or gaining life. I guess they could just replay the colony garden. And they could even cast another titan here, jeez. It's not a titan for sure. <laughs> Three six are boreal grazer. Fair enough. And a plant. Yeah. All right. I've about seen enough. I mean, we kept a pretty excellent hand. Two threats. Two disruptive spells. Two lands. We just never hit the land. Happens. All right. Damping sphere is going to be good. Uh, I like the cleansing wildfires. Brutality is interesting. We can take Summoner's Pact, turn Timber Symbiosis. Um, and then we can kill like Azusa and Sakura Tribe Scout if they're playing that. I don't know that I want Plague Engineer. It'll trade with Titan. And uh, it'll keep the board empty of plants, which is interesting. So it's a consideration. Um, I'm going to shave a push. It's only going to relevantly kill like the Dryad of the Illusory Grove. Uh, I don't think I want to be Seasoned Pyromancering. They're just way too slow. I'm going to cut one off the top. Definitely going to keep the Colgon's commands. It kills stuff like Amulet. As does Decay. I think I'm going to trim a Bolt. This is 60. <laughs> Traditional Jundr, Jund with Spice. Kinda Spice. No Ren and Six. We'll reveal after. So now it's like, do I want to bring in Plague Engineers just as a bad way to kill Titan and, the, and a good way to kill plants? I, I think Brutality is probably just overall too weak. 
It's possible these Plague Engineers are just better than something like Fatal Push. But I think I'd take out the Lightning Bolts first, because again, Push can kill Dryad, which they've got to probably have to uh, combo with Valakut. I think I'm just going to submit this. Let's go first. Damn, one land, can't keep. Better. And then I guess I'll just bottom a swamp here and I'll go ravine on one. Goyf's gonna be kinda tiny, but I'm gonna play it on two unless the opponent goes amulet on one in which case I'll probably just decay the amulet fair enough oh how do I feel about that I mean it's obviously good <laughs> I just don't know uh, how I want to order things now this makes me almost want to just play the termogwave to get the pressure down and then I can use the disruption um, on my opponent's turn, but uh, I have to be careful of Veil of Summer to protect the amulet from the Abrupt Decay. It's a real interesting draw. I almost think I want to just get the Goyf down, but it, it might just be better to disrupt the opponent as much as possible, because like, if they have a Bounce Land, they're starting to produce extra mana as early as next turn. So let's, let's just, I think, get this amulet out of here. And then next turn, I'll probably play Goyf. So ne best draws next turn would be like Inquisition, Thoughtseize. Just things I can play at the same time I'm playing Goyf. Another wildfire, that's good. So the the opponent can go um, turn th th uh, they can play a three drop next turn if I uh, don't play any of these cards. So I think I'm just gonna wildfire, looking for more action. I feel a little really awkward not being able to attack while doing all of this. So I mean, maybe I should have just played the goyf. To get something going because like all, all doing all of this is fine but if i'm not applying pressure at the same time it could all be just in vain all right so now i'll go if maybe even untapped land lets me play sphere afterwards as well inquisition's fine but we could get veiled wish i had found that last turn all right, well, they don't have it. So there is in the graveyard, instant sorcery land artifact. If I take Dryad, there's gonna be enchantment creature, which means dismember no longer kills my goif, which is pretty pretty sick. So let's, let's do that. Six, seven, I even miscounted somehow. That's thick. It's bigger than dismember, that's all that matters. And then hopefully these Damping Spheres can uh, keep the opponent off of their Titan for long enough for the Glaive to kill them. And Bolt is a nice draw because that's going to shave a, a turn off of the clock. And I'm thinking I actually want to cast a Cleansing Wildfire here. Probably targeting Castle Garenbrig. The opponent won't have access to Titan next turn no matter what, or any bounce land mana, and Cleansing Wildfire might like draw me into more lands, which is relevant because I may be able to activate Ravine at some point, and if I hit the land, I could always just play the Damping Sphere anyway. So pretty much anything would be fine except a four drop. That's okay. <laughs> 
All right. So I think I'm throwing the bolt upstairs. The damping spheres are going to make my mana a little strange. So I want to just cast all my spells when I can. Peatland's fine. I can go Goyf into Damping Sphere as opposed to the other way around. And then Damping Sphere is going to prevent like another Castle Garen Brig from producing the 6th mana coming up, which is nice. As long as my opponent doesn't have main deck engineered explosives. I guess it's not main deck, but as long as my opponent doesn't have engineered explosives, I should be fine. They're using this as a gain 1, sure. Unless they've got another Dismember, in which case this is not a gain 1. And, uh, so any, any one Glaive is lethal next turn, so that may be a reason to not play second Glaive, but if the opponent plays a creature, which they, I'm sure they've got plenty of, um, I don't want to prolong the game and let them actually get to the casting of the Titan. So let's, let's just do it all. And there's the castle, they would have tightened. Yep, you make one colorless. So yeah, the plan here must have been make a plant. But even then they're they're double jumping. GG. Alright, so luckily not casting Goyf on 2 ended up not destroying us. But I mean, Damping Sphere did its work. A, a few people suggested to me recently that I should be playing more Wildfire before more Spheres, but I, I had listed in my in my uh, my responses. I, I like to try to respond to everyone on my YouTube comments. I, I responded that Sphere is better um, versus Storm and Amulet, which I expect to see a lot of. And then we see the Sphere being strictly better than the Wildfire here. Granted, we, we did we did also have two cleansing wildfires. I think I'm just gonna keep it as it is. I mean, it's it's possible I should bring in this push so on the draw it's easier to kill Dryad. I mean, two two is probably fine. Let's just resubmit. I think I think second bolt's gonna be better than third push. Trips, is that good? I don't think I can keep this. If we if we if we spike a land it could be good. But if we don't, our hand does actual nothing, and I don't think I want to risk doing actual nothing. Like if we if we get lucky and hit the land, it's not even guaranteed good enough. We don't have any early disruption other than sphere. Our hand is pretty redundant. Yeah, the sand I think is a lot better. Um and then I'm thinking I'm just going to bottom Lightning Bolt. It, it, the only relevant thing I think it would kill early is like Azusa, right? Like our Boreal Grazer doesn't matter by the time they've cast it. It's not killing a Dryad. So let's bottom that. This, this hand is plenty fine if we can find green. We just also need to find a threat at some point. Alright, so if they play Bounce Land, um, hopefully I get to uh, Wildfire it at some point. Definitely casting Inquisition and going to be sad when I brick. Ooh, there's there's the threat that I mentioned we were missing. Kind of awkward that Grazer fits in front of it pretty nicely. But uh, let, let's see if we can take anything. All right, we do, we do hit something, which is nice. And then we get some info. What did you draw? Like an Explore? Explosives on two. That's annoying. So that, that's gonna take care of Dark Confidant pretty handily. I think, I think, oh, sending a message. <laughs> if we can find untapped green, or just an untapped land in general, I was like, w w one of the best ways we win this game, I think, is if the Liliana can race their hand. And then obviously they've got explosives on two, so I'm gonna Cleansing Wildfire their bounce land here, slow them down, and then hopefully try to hit a land. If, if I can stick Liliana next turn, I'm going to feel really, really good. But if I can't, I'm going to be real behind. 
Nope. All right, well, we haven't fallen. We, we haven't missed a land drop yet. Let's see if we can hit something. I'll even take a black leaf clips. Just, just give me something I can use. You don't want to send the message this time? All right, come on. Everyone, everyone cross their fingers. Excellent. All right, we did it. All right, so they've only got three mana available. So if they're, if they're, if they're going to want to continue making land drops, um, it's it's possible that they're not going to, that they're, they're going to have to end up discarding their copies of Titan before they get there. Yeah, love to see it. Hate to not see it <laughs> even more. Bounce lands are going to be, I think, the opponent's best draws. Just because like they get to make land drops while keeping the same number of cards in their hand, which means they can continue to hold Titans while implusing Liliana. And they, they do have this explosives on two, which is annoying. I'm I'm really hoping that Liliana is gonna get to ultimate at some point. Another land is fine. I, I think I may end up discarding a creature just because like explosives on two is real annoying. And I think I may need to keep this pulse for a copy of Titan if the opponent gets there. Although maybe maybe that's maybe that's a little bit too conservative because like if if I plus here, um, play a play a creature, the opponent pops explosives. Then on the following turn, I'm up to six. I can play another creature, and then I, I have a creature in play attacking on the same turn I'm ultimating, which is I think what I I want to do. So uh, the question then is, what what creature am I feeding to the explosives? Because the other one is getting discarded more than likely. I could I could discard the pulse, but I want an out to this Titan. It's like if if they if they Titan me right, and Liliana is still in play, Titan won't have haste. So I can I can pulse the Titan, and then uh, still have the Liliana around and I'll ultimate the following turn. So I'm fairly confident I need to keep pulse. Let's plus. And then, I, I guess just discarding a land is, is probably fine. So I'm assuming they're going to keep Titan, because if they rip a Castle Garen Brig, that's the way that they come ahead. And I, I think I'm going to put the Dark Confidant into the explosives, because uh, the Goyf will finish the game faster after the Liliana ultimate, ideally. So if they rip the castle, um, I've got the pulse for the titan and I can continue plussing. So I mean, it, it works out. Interesting. I mean, this, this works fine too, because now I can pulse the dryad and then still have the Liliana ready to ultimate. And then the plus is going to have the opponent discarding titan. So this, this is, I think, us pulling ahead. And Kolgon's command can kill the explosives, but that's not really what I'm worried about right now. So let's kill Dryad. Plus Liliana. Um, I, I definitely want the additional threat. I think I'm keeping the Kolgon's command because I could draw step it um, to buy another turn if I need it. And then obviously no attack. All right, so not even not even castle saves the opponent, and they don't have three colors of mana um, to fight the Liliana here. With another explosives, I mean. All right, so this Liliana is going to do an impression of double stone rain. Oh wow, that's good. So I'll give the grazer with the opponent's uh, best land. Or I guess I'll give the grazer. I'll put the I'll put two cards with the the grazer and the best land in the other pile. 
And then now I'm just going to play my Tarmogoyf to start trying to close the game. Oh, well, I guess the opponent didn't want to stick around long enough to figure out what our spice actually was, but it'd be like that. Alright, so we're 1-0, that's cool. We've got a 100% win rate, so we should just stop here, right? Alright, so now that we're in the correct queue, let's try this again. Udok, thanks for the subscription with Prime, I really, really appreciate it. All right, we got a match, and we are we are the creators. We're waiting for Kings King Smudge. It's like Kings Mudge. What's that? Oh, Kings Smudge. Makes more sense. All right, create a match. King sm King Smudge. Create. All right, cool. Yes, let's go first. Yikes. No, I, I can't keep one landers typically. This hand is, is significantly better. I think I'm just gonna uh, bottom a blood braid here. Keep keep all of my cheaper interaction ready to go. And I'm gonna fetch lock blood crypt first. Blood crypt means I can either bolt or cast second disruption spell um, next turn without paying additional life. And I know it says Jun League 61 on the stream decker, but that, that is correct. The, the list hasn't changed since then. The opponent has also Mulligan, so that's nice. Eldrazi Tron. All right, well, difficult pick here between Reshaper or Reshaper. map okay they don't have any other tron land so that's not ridiculously scary um karn is gonna be annoying but we've got lightning bolt to kill it after the initial minus and mattery shaper is just a kind kind of a headache so i think i'm actually thought seizing and just gonna plan on taking the mattery shaper obviously we don't know of something in the opponent's and that that's not true it was map all right so i'm gonna take the reshaper Leave him with the Karn. Say go. And then this will plan on getting Stomping Ground to complete the Trifecta. How do I like the matchup versus Etron? I think it's uh, fairly close, but Etron comes out ahead. Their, their threats are, are pretty beefy. Chalice on one, that's a draw. So do I wanna do I wanna fetch shock bolt in response just to get damage? It's it's doing three to each of us. I kinda just wanna keep the bolt in hand to be honest. Like there's a chance that I'm able to kill the chalice at some point and then bolt becomes actually relevant. Ooh, that was a good one. Alright, not going to hold Lightning Bolt up because Chalice. Alright, hey Bob, can you give me like a basic land of any type? Kroxa. Kroxa is really strong versus Etron. As is Tarmogoyf. Alright, let's attack first. And then I have to decide, do I want to play Kroxa or Tarmogoyf? Um, I think I'm leaning towards Kroxa. I think it's going to be overall the more powerful play. The thing is, though, the opponent can very easily get... Or they actually already have the Scavenger Ground, so that's not really a factor. I mean, if they're sacrificing their land and putting themselves farther behind on land drops, I'm kind of okay with that as well. So which do I want to do? I think I'm going to go Tarmogoyf here. 
if they pop the scavenger grounds, it's the play that makes me not completely have wasted, basically wasted my mana. Like, the opponent will have had to have discarded a card, but that's kind of minimal right now. They've already got their payoff. And if they do pop Scavenger Grounds, I'm kind of happy that I kept the Bolt because I can at least add a life to the yard for the Tarmogoyf. Thanks for the follow. I appreciate it. Poff. There's the Karn. They played all of this. Alright, so they've got two things we don't know about. I wonder what they get here. Maybe they're just setting up Bridge for next turn. And a quick reminder that we can no longer bolt the Karn because there's a Chalice here. Yep, they are they are in fact just setting up the bridge. So I'm probably going to be attacking the Karn with the Dark Confidant. Bloodstained Mire, excellent. Alright, so now I can just Blood Braid and then Blood Braid can kill the Karn and then we can also just see what the Blood Braid hits. I'll get Basic Swamp looks like. we hit a one drop it'll be awkward but uh any any threat will be nice and there's a threat all right so this will resolve um this will kill karn this will smack face this will smack face boom so yeah like progressions like this obviously Jund, Jund looks good versus Etron, but I, I think the average game one where the opponent has like some number of mattery of mattery shapers, thought not seers, and reality smashers, it gets a lot harder. They did have two shape reshapers, but we we neutralized those. So, can we find a Kologon's command to just end this? Pulse. I'll accept that. This is lethal, right? Like, I don't have to, like, bolt them? Yes, yeah, it's plenty lethal. Unban Ayavugan, you say? Stay away with that. <laughs> Stay far, far away with that. <laughs> Alright, so Etron. Uh, I like Plague Engineer. Obviously, gonna name Eldrazi to shrink him. It's not gonna actually kill any Eldrazi, but it, uh, it it'll trade when it when it uh, when it blocks. So death touch death touch is definitely a keyword. Um, I have not liked Damping Sphere versus Etron. Uh, along similar lines, I don't think I really like Wildfire either. It just doesn't really do enough. Huntmaster is interesting. It, it's a little slow, but I mean, so are they a good amount of the time. What do we want to take out? Um, I think I'm gonna trim a bolt. I want to keep the pushes first because they're gonna kill reshapers on top of thought knots ears, whereas bolts won't kill thought knots. And then definitely keeping thought seas before Inquisition, but maybe I want to take some number of them out. Chalice is a concern. It's a double-edged sword, right? Because like you need the Inquisition or oh, Thoughtseize on one to take the Chalice, but if you don't ha if you don't have it early, then they don't do anything late because they just get countered. I think I'm gonna cut one Ag against mid-range in general. I don't really like these kinds of cards, but there there's some stuff that we really care about, like um, the uh th that artifact like either scries or draws four cards eventually. We need to take take out two more. Yeah, I'm thinking the Inquisitions just are not going to be that great. I'm, I'm going to keep a couple out of, out of Fear of Chalice and that artifact thing. Reshaper 2, I guess it could take. Croak's a Glaif, all great. I'm going to shave a Bob. The opponent does play Walking Blister, right? Or like maybe they also bring in like Warping Whales and uh, Spatial Contortions. So Bob is probably our more fragile creature. This hand, I think, is on the bad side of keepable. Yeah, if, if Ayavugan gets unbanned, I think a lot of things die, not just Chun. 
But yeah, I think I think this hand's on the on the bad side of keepable. We've we've got the turn one Inquisition, followed by a turn two Tarmut Wave, and Glyph is probably our best creature in the matchup. It's it's basically our Eldrazi. Let's see if I can hit something here. Maybe a reshaper or something. All right. Well, we had a few options. Reshaper, Tome. That's that's the thing I could not remember the name of. And walking ballista. All right. Well, lightning bolt can deal with the reshaper and the ballista. Tome, Tome, I think is going to be the thing I have the hardest time beating in the long run. I definitely think it's not ballista. Reshaper is going to be a, a two for one almost no matter what, but Maze Mind Tome has the potential to be so much more. And like, our Tarmor Wife can maybe stonewall the Reshaper, so I, I think I'm just going to take the Tome. And it's funny, I did mention in sideboarding that one of the reasons why I wanted to keep in so much hand disruption was because cards like this are so annoying. And there it is. All right, so that was a fine draw. So the question now is Kroxa or Tarmogoyf? I think it's just Tarmogoyf. Tarmogoyf can start attacking more quickly. We're not really that close from to, to escaping a Kroxa. Um, Goyf doesn't outsize the reshaper for just this one turn, but after we add Lightning Bolt, it will. Also, it's probably pretty important to get down our, my more important threats before the opponent can take them with a potential Thought Knot. Like, if I Kroxa here and the opponent Thought Knot's my, my Goyf, I'm kind of left without a, without a decent threat. The opponent can neutralize my Kroxa with uh, mapping for some amount of... So for some, some, for some for really any grave, Graveyard Hate piece, probably Scavenger Grounds. And there it is another map okay so the hand is ballista ghost quarter something you want to attack no i guess i guess they figure that they plan on popping scavenger grounds at some point fatal push is actually fine if, if i croak up first that'll be a way to enable revolt and i do think i want to get their creatures off the field because that can make a blood braid on turn four much better so I, I definitely think I want to be removing this matter shaper. The question is, how am I removing it? Um, and I, I think I'm leaning towards just using the lightning bolts because given the presence of scavenger grounds, I don't want them to get rid of my Kroxa so easily. So let's play a land, zap this. I mean, I, then again, I guess the consideration is bolt kills Karn, baby Karn. So it's, it's really a question of like, what am I really worried about, right? I think I'm going to have uh, an easier time beating Karn. It's kind of kind of close. I mean, I've got Blood Braid to hast hastily attack a Karn. So I, I think I am just going to go ahead and use the Bolt and save the Kroxa for another day. Also, I guess Push has, has an easier time dealing with uh, Thought Knots, right? Blast Zone, that's annoying. All right, we get to attack. Yeah, I think maybe the opponent should have attacked because I mean we're playing Jund, right? Odds odds that we've got some way to get it out of the way are pretty high. This is in play, so yeah, may maybe they should have attacked, but it's close. This is a dismember. All right, Glyphs of four or five. We cannot add a type in any way, unfortunately. There's already an instant here. All right, so that's just gonna work. Ghost quarters, it's like what ballista for two now. If they ballista for two, I will push that. Oh, and there's the Karn. Alright, well I've got I've got the hasty blood braid as I as I drew it up. So I'm happy that I uh, played in such a way where I didn't just put myself behind to what my opponent is very likely to find at some point at least. But Having whatever this finds on top of a ballista is going to be annoying. I guess Kroxa can get rid of one of those things. They got a crypt. 
they're playing it immediately. That's interesting. All right, well, definitely, definitely still casting the Blood Braid to get this Karn dead. There, there's the next red source to escape Kroxa, but I do still have to be worried about Scavenger Grounds and or Blast Zone. Th this turn isn't particularly hard. Um, I think I'm just going to go Swamp and Blood Braid here. And then I'm looking for an additional piece of pressure here, like a Tarmogoyf for a Bob. Bob, I guess not so much. And there's, there's the Tarmogoyf. I'll say Bob, Bob, not so much because Walking Blista is so good against it. Goyf, Goyf was probably one of our better hits. They do still have the Scavenger Grounds. But it may force the issue and enable us to keep our Kroxa. And then not fetching there because I, I'm going to want cards in my graveyard after something after one of these things gets activated. Alright, so Ballista for three. We've got a push. And then we're going to have a Goyf sticking around after the fact, which is pretty nice. Alright, so this is this is coming up Jun so far. Thoughtsy doesn't actually do anything right now. So let's get this out of the way. I'm assuming one at me, two kills Blood Braid. Man, we've got a 5-6 attacker. And then I'm not going to Thoughtsy's just to put a card in the yard. I'll do that after Scavenger Grounds or Crypt gets popped. One at Goyf. I don't quite understand that as opposed to just going at me. Because they, they can't exile both yards right now, so Goyf isn't dying. Alright, there goes Crypt. Yeah, this, this, is, this is a fairly close game. The opponent has many draws that could bury me. Like, if they draw Ugin the Ineffable, I could very easily lose. Like, they could kill my Tarmogoyf, still have an answer to this Kroxa. Speaking of Kroxa, am I playing it here? I think I am. Um, this is going to guarantee that um, it, it does 3 damage to the opponent. Or has them lose 3 life, more, more like it. It's like, whatever, whatever they find here... They're definitely just slamming. And Goyf's a 4-5. Um, and there's not yet a sorcery, so I can Thought Seize to press the issue. It's another map. They The, the issue might be pressed far enough by just uh, attacking... Like, if I thought these, they have to pop Scavenger Grounds. They might have another one, but they've got whatever lands they want. Yeah, may maybe I, I should just force the issue and make it happen. Thing is, like, if, I if I attack for four and put them to one, then I've got some number of outs that just kill them on the spot. Blood Braid, Bolt, Kolagon's Command. It, it's kind of strange, but I think I'm just going to put them at one as opposed to casting Thoughtseize. Rebuilding a graveyard, I think, is going to be pretty important. Um, so like after they pop this, I'm going to want to Thought Seize to add Sorcery to the art again. Uh, can you do two damage to Planeswalkers with the Colagon's Command? Yes, Colagon's Command says any target. Alright, and now I actually do get to attack, funny enough, because I've got a Bloodstained Mire in play and this does a damage. The opponent may have wanted to sacrifice a map before activating that. Just because then it's not adding artifact for Goyf on the following turn. Uh, is there a reason to hold the land? I don't think there is. Let's just play it. I'm not playing like Tracker or anything. Sure. The opponent also can't put a counter on Blast Zone this way. I wonder what they get here. They, they may just be trying to complete the Tron. It's another blast zone for future things. Yeah, I guess that makes some amount of sense. 
They drew an Eldrazi. No fair. Reshaper. All right, well, my Thoughtseize means that I'm going to get to outsize it. But it's not lethal. If I can draw a way to remove the Reshaper right now, like a, like a Lightning Bolt or a Colgon's Command, I'll just win. That's a good one, too. All right, so doing this to make my Goyf bigger. Oh, no, there's nothing. Jam. So pretty, pretty glad again that I held this thought seize as opposed to firing it off earlier to try to escape the Kroxa. I think I think the little little piece of extra discipline there is is, is definitely paying dividends now. I think without the presence of Blast Zone, oh, there's the Ugin. There, there would be argument to not even attacking here, given that I know that I've got Huntmaster in play. Because if like the opponent um, is unable to um, to deal with the Tarmogoyf here, I have three attackers for two next turn, which would hit them exactly lethal. But Blast Zone dealing with the threat means that's not necessarily a line I've got access to. Alright, and Ugin, Ugin's coming down. All right, load it up for a goyf. Yep. Yeah, it's funny because like if they ugin, they have to plus right, or they just die. Like they kill a thing, we just attack them. Same if they minus right, we just attack them. So I think we might just get. I think we might just be there already. Yeah. Wow, that was really good for the opponent. All right, well, <laughs> Liliana luckily is going to eat the um, the Ugin from the opponent's hand. But yeah, a way, a, way, a way to kill the Huntmaster there was really huge. I mean, we, we could still die if the opponent finds, I guess, not another Ugin. They no longer have the requisite mana. Don't know what this gets. Is there anything that deals with a wolf? Mine. Alright, so we got there. I can what? I don't remember what you're responding to. <laughs> Alright, let's find another match. If you're if you're talking about the question Poff had, then I think I responded to that already. Yeah. All right, so we're two and zero. Oh. Let's play another one. All good. All good. Oh, I guess now would be a, a cool time to mention. Uh, so I've got two main hobbies, one of which is obviously Airsoft. Or sorry, Magic, and the other is Airsoft. Um, and I recently got some cool camera setups, and I learned how to edit. So if, if Airsoft is a thing you're interested in, I'm going to post a link um, in uh, my YouTube channel. Um, to uh, a link under this video it, on my magic YouTube channel. So if you're interested in that kind of thing um, I've got I'm gonna have a separate channel for for airsoft videos whenever I get those edited I've got one right now, which I've been working on for a little while All right, we're making the match for Oof, I don't want to spell that. Let's just copy paste create
Boom. Cool. Frenetic Freak. Oof. All right, well, uh, no black sources is awkward. I think I'm going to ship, as does the opponent. And th this hand is significantly better. I think I'm going to bottom ravine here. I've got a 1-2-3 punch curve. So I'm just going to keep all the lands that can, can guarantee that I actually get to do that. Joy. All right, so this might be this could this could be Ponza. This could also be Green White Heliod. Uh, I'm pretty scared of the Blood Moon, but if the opponent has one copy of it, at least this Inquisition gets to take it. Wow, we just like straight bricked. Unfortunate. Imagine being on the play. <laughs> Stomping grounds, and we can't Dark Confidant now because Chandra just like wrecks that. Chandra wrecks that too. So I guess I'm gonna go Kroxa. I think Kroxa is probably going to be our best bet at this game. Turn 3 Chandra on the play from the opponent we're on, we're, when we're on an effective mulligan to 5. It's going to be pretty rough. Effective because we mulligan to 6 and then our Inquisition just straight bricked on turn 1. Pretty unfortunate. Alright, i got to imagine Chandra is coming down here. Bloodbraid instead. Pretty good. Alright, well, we, we can season Pyromancer and maybe draw the forest. Kind of kind of silly that we had Swamp and then our, our, the two fetches we had did not get basic forest. A little unlucky, but it'd be like that. Alright, let's ditch the double black thing and then we're gonna need the goif if we find the forest. Indeed. If we find swamp as well. I'm definitely going to trade with this, the the Pyromancer if they attack. Because then if I find Swamp, I could also be escaping Kroxa. Come on, Forest. Not quite. Well, we do get to Inquisition. It doesn't do a whole lot, but we do. Alright, let's uh, attack the Chandra. And then I'll follow up with Inquisition. Get that fifth card in the yard. I guess the opponent is worried of a lightning bolt finishing off the Chandra, but they've got moon in play, so they should probably just take this hit, because even if I have the bolt, they're likely still ahead. Okay. <laughs> Glorybringer as a finisher. They need a land for that one, at least. Actually, they've got Chandra. They can just make mana.
It's like if I draw forest here, I almost just have to pulse that. We're dead though. All right, so the, the moon did it. You think keeping the bob over Goyf might be better? You already have black. If Chandra down ticks on you, you're happy because you get to crack back and kill it. Um, keeping bob over Goyf when? On the mulligan? I kept both. I don't know what decision point you're referring to. Oh, when when I pyroed, you like keeping Bob over Goyf. Uh, I think we need the Goyf to win the game, though. Like the Bob just really doesn't have much of an impact. Like if they if they minus on the Chandra to kill the Goyf, I guess you're right. We can, we can attack it back, right? That's what you're saying. Alright, so Plague Engineer is going to kill the opponent's elementals. Huntmaster is going to be good. Uh, I think on the play, I want the Wildfires. It's a way to get out from under a Blood Moon. Also, the opponent might play uh, the enchantment on their land on turn one, and we can disrupt that. So I, th I think these are the ins. And then I need the outs. I think on the play, I'm going to take out a push because it's less important to kill the reducer. Uh, I think I'm also taking out Liliana's. Double black is a liability. And uh, it's also going to be rough if the opponent has like Seasoned Pyromancer or something. So we need two more cuts here. I mean, we're, we're playing against a mid-range deck, so I could definitely see wanting to shave Hand Disruption, but Blood Moon is so powerful that maybe I want to keep in a good amount. Yeah, I, I, I think I like your line better in Hindsight and J-Dex. Like, I, I was pretty set on just keeping the Goyf because Goyf tends to be the best creature in the matchup, but at that moment in time, it, it's possible I needed to play the Bob just to force the issue on the Chandra. Alright, I'm going to cut a K-Command as well. They're just not killing my stuff very often. And like, just destroy destroy a creature. Two, two damage isn't going to kill a whole lot. They don't really have any artifacts. And like, discarding a card is not going to be that great. Oop, it just happened. Alright, let's submit this. Let's go first. This is pretty interesting. We don't have any way to like actually disrupt the opponent. If we play a Goyf early, they can very easily bolt it. If we go Kroxa first, that's not the case. The important thing here is we could we could play around Blood Moon. Off the back of Goyf being one of our better creatures and having lands to beat Blood Moon, I think I'm going to keep, but I'm really not excited about it. And then I did take out Liliana's so I think I can get a duel here and then go like forest on two swamp on three So if I'm getting a duel which one I guess that's blood crypt because then I can get forest immediately Forest though is really really awkward um, trying to escape Kroxa So if I'm not getting forest do I just have to get swamp here if I get Swamp here, I can then get Stomping. For Forest is just too important, like for the Goyf. Like it's it's gonna make it harder to escape the Kroxa. All right, let's let's still just get the Blood Crypt here. I don't think that much changes. Bolt. There is still a turn off of Blood Moon. They can't Spirit Guide into it because that thing is banned. So I guess I'll Swamp first. Continue to get some information. I don't want to play Goyf yet because it's in both range if I do that. So let's let's swamp Kroxa. And then hope they don't have like a bail off or something. It's, it's hard to not do this, but I think the odds they've got Bolt are much higher than the odds they've got bail off. Even, even Bone Crusher Giant would do it because Bone Crusher would go into exile and not the yard. So it would actually kill a 1-2 Goyf if they stomped it. Yep. 
So, Bolt's gonna kill Tarmoglyph anyway, huh? So, because, like, if they, they can minus on the Tarmoglyph and then Bolt it, and that'll be a way to do it. Actually, no, because they discarded Planeswalker. I'm, I'm talking nonsense. Um, I think what I want to do here is I'm definitely playing a fetch, and I, I'm going to send a Bolt upstairs no matter what, because Bolt and two more fetches, um, and then and any other card means I'm escaping Kroxa immediately after. Should I just Kroxa then? Because that actually guarantees that I get to cast Kroxa. Because, obviously, not counting the Kroxa in the yard, land, 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 bolt, that's four. If I Kroxa here, exile other Kroxa, I can get Kroxa and play on four. As long as I don't get basic forest. Yeah. Let, let's, let's go for Kroxa. Um, on the following turn here. And I'll still play a Verdant in case they play Blood Moon. It, it's still probably important to have access to Forest, which means I wouldn't escape it um, coming up. But I won't be out of the game. They might not have anything. They might, they might just be wanting to buy this back immediately. No Blood Moon here, please. I can beat it, but it, it gets awkward. Thanks. That's fine. Alright, so... End step here. Gonna, gonna be throwing this lightning bolt somewhere. Let's get stomping ground. Say yes. Question is where? I think I do actually want to just shock this Finx. Because if they block my Kroxa, then any bolt kills Kroxa. But also Ren and Six is going to ultimate at some point, which is unnerving. Yeah, it did look pretty scary for a sec. So I'm definitely casting this bolt. I don't know which of these two targets, though. I mean, Ren and Six emblem... Uh, isn't isn't game finishing on its own. I think I'm just gonna go after the Finks, accept my losses there. But I, I do want to protect my Ren and Six from just getting blocked and then bolted. All right, so then we need to fetch. Um, I guess I could just get Swamp here. I've already got one green. If they Blood Moon me, at least it's a basic. I don't really need lots of green for any reason. The, the reason it would bite me is if I draw, like, another Tarmogoyf next turn. I can't get Basic Forest that doesn't escape Kroxa. So it's like, do I want to go to 13 to get Overgrown to him? I honestly think it's my, it's it might be worth it. I guess it's only Tarmogoyf would be another spell. Let, let's save the life, I think. Two, I'm, I'm pref preferring two life um, over... Um, exactly a Tarmogwave draw next turn. Alright, turn four, Kroxa escaped. Please be good enough. This is the Bailoff. And then I'll attack the Red and Six next turn. Bob is going to look pretty bad uh, until I can get it off. I guess I'll just yield. Blood breed time. Yep. What'd you get? Moon. Crap. Alright, well, we're off for green, so Glyph is no longer a card. But I mean, I'm, I'm hoping Kroxa is just enough to get there. So, the decision to get Swamp ends up paying off. 
Inquisition is, is a, an interesting draw. The opponent's pretty likely to just discard a land as opposed to something that costs three or less. So I think I'll hold this after. And then let's let's try to get this run in six dead. They do have to block. If they want to save it. Karoksa hits hard. And there's the Misty that's been getting looped forever. You want to save it? They might just value the pressure on the back end. Because I'm at 15. They, they've in theory got like Glorybringers, Bolts, more Blood Braids. Things to provide burst damage. So if they don't block, that may mean that they've just got more like hasty, hasty damage in hand. Uh, they have to like bolt it twice or like block and bolt it, I think, Jadex. I don't think they play Engineered Explosives. All right, info time. Oh wow, we actually hit something. Excellent. All right, and I could bob here, but that's just gonna get tagged. So let's not. I'll play it next turn, because then they actually have to decide between pinging it and using the ultimate, but the ultimate doesn't actually do anything. What it would do is it would combo with a bolt to kill Kroxa, which would be pretty unfortunate. So something to be wary of at some point. Right, there's stomping ground. So we, we need to hope the opponent just like draws lands and like Utopia sprawls. Not Glorybringer though. <laughs> there's the Glorybringer. Yikes. Wow, they're just going full aggro mode now. Respectable. I mean, we're dead on board unless I hold Kroxa back. That Glorybringer was a ridiculous draw. So like I can kill the I can kill the Red and Six here, but then I'm just literally dead on crackback. Like even if I play one blocker, they they just exert the glory bringer and I'm dead that way. Yeah, this this was a ridiculous draw. That that had to have been their best. Like maybe Elder Gargaroth is like close a close second, but El the glory bringer just had to have been their best draw. I can only play Bob here. If I play Bob, they minus on Bob. They can exert. I block. We trade. They've got a 4-4 in play, and then I'm just very, very dead. Yeah, I, I think I'm on zero outs. Like I can survive a turn, but then I'm still I'm still I'm still dead on board after surviving a turn. I don't have green mana to like draw a maelstrom pulse. Yeah, let's go first. What's with these one landers? Nope. Two lander with things we can cast. Yes, please. Let's keep. I think I'm going to bottom Colagon's command. I'll keep the 1 2, hopefully 3 curve. And I do want a Thought Seize here. I guess I'll just get Swamp. We could be playing against like Burn or something. Bop. Mono Red Prowess. They've got two creatures. Let's take one of them. And they've also got one land, so... From a good game standpoint, hopefully they draw their land. But from a I want to win standpoint, I'm really hoping they stumble. Alright, and I do think I'm going to just fetch shock bolt this thing. Thought I bought them due. I'm gonna do it now so they can't like use some spells to uh to save their thing. So ideally we draw like black I the ideal draw would be black leaf clips, but any black source is gonna be more than welcome. Another thing they did miss the land. Alright, land please. Not that one. Alright, well, I kind of think I'm not even playing Goyf. It being the third copy of Soul Scar is going to make my removal very, very awkward. Like, if I play this, I can't even... 
I can't even block, right? You know, I think I am going to play it. I've got Colgon's Command to get it back. Um, and I, I do need to save damage. Like, if the opponent Lava spikes me here... Um, I'm taking 5, and being at 9 is not good. I drew the Swamp, how lucky. Alright, well this is their hand. They don't yet have any targeted spells other than Lava Dart. I don't think they want to sacrifice a, a mountain quite yet. they attack am i blocking kind of think i am like they can uh, they use that they can lava dart if they have actually there's one card i didn't track quite correctly i do think i am blocking it, they, they'd have to as far as what i know use burn spells on goif which is gonna end up saving me a lot of damage i want them to like mostly tap out here i think because then my colagon's command um can kill their thing if they put lava dart in the yard that gets more complicated but even then i can kill a land effectively yeah they have they have one unknown now they have three unknowns well two i guess because that was an unknown so now they can just lava dart and kill my thing I imagine they're going to want to use their mana, though. They're Lava Darting me. I guess they can Burst Lightning me, and that just has it outgrowing my Glaif anyway. Alright, so they're tapped out. Oh, wow, that was good. Alright, so I think now I'm just going to get other, other Swamp cast Liliana like I could call guns command here but they can save it with lava dart um they can kill Liliana with lava dart but if they're killing Liliana with lava dart after Liliana has already been cashed in for some value I'm pretty happy about that all right go not dead in the water yet but we're at 10 versus kind of a burn deck while we have no pressure in play no slip spear please no slip spear please Happy. All right. Bob. Bob gets lava darted. I think I'm just gonna use this turn to Colagon's command buy back a Tarmogoyf, and then other mode probably just gonna be have opponent discard. They should probably be holding their lands because they they probably have spells given that they haven't been playing anything. And like now now I'm gonna have them discarding a spell more likely than not. So. Return a creature and discard a card. So return Goyf, you'll discard. Nope, they, they do just have more lands. Okay. Ooh, that was good. Alright, so let's Inquisition first. Not that anything they have would kill Goyf. <laughs> Mutagenic growth. Mutagenic growth is a good thing to know about. Tarmogoth. Alright, we've got a 5-6. Bob's still awkward. They've got Lava Dart. I think 10 against this deck is about the, the highest, the lowest life I'd actually want to play Bob. Are you kidding? <laughs> Come on. I just got off the back of my opponent's drawing best possibles. That's brutal. That's good. All right, let's just lead there. Yeah, that that was absurd. I mean, Pyromancer is one of our better draws, though. As far as ways to kill it, we've got three copies of Liliana and a Maelstrom Pulse. We have four Lilianas in the deck, but one's been used already. Liliana's will get worse if uh, they draw more creatures. Bob and push. <laughs> Not exactly. Udok revealed, drink some water. I don't actually have any with me at the moment. Am I attacking? But I'll get I'll get some after this game. I do, do actually need that. Thanks for reminding me. I don't, I don't even think I can attack here. I think I might need to combo a block. So 
There's like two of these in the deck, right? They just spiked one. Crap. Hiya. Lava Dart, me. Did they draw a light up the stage too? Hey opponent, I'm gonna need you to to stop. All right, well at least they stopped. <laughs> They've got two darts in the yard to use at will. You want to attack here? If you if they if they attack, I'll just throw an elemental in front. Two darts means this is gonna have eight toughness which I, I don't I have I have eight power but if they like lava dart and elemental I just get blown out all right so if they're gonna let me block with an elemental I'll block with an elemental the elemental is gonna get darted anyway all right Liliana or maelstrom pulse please no do I want to just play the dark confidant like, it's, it's going to get darted, but I mean, it's close. I'm definitely going to play this land because it has me able to activate Ravine or or Pyromancer. I think I am playing the, the Dark Confidant. Reason being is if they go like Lava Dart, Lava Dart, and my Pyromancer to kill it, this is a 5-6, this is a 5-6, any other spell has me just getting ridiculously blown out. At least this way, um, they can't kill both of my things with just the Lava Darts that I know about. So am I attacking then? I mean, I'm not blocking with Tarmogoyf. I I, I kind of can't though, because like if they if they draw like any other bolt, any other lava dart, any other um, what's it called, burst lightning, then I do actually have to block. All right, so what's the block here? Probably just the Bob. Like I I could try to draw some spells but lava darts are gonna make that not happen let's let's just block and feel sad about it paying costs sure I guess they just want to put the spell in the yard come on deck that one's fine like, if I'm not going to draw a Liliana or a Pulse, I guess that's what I want. Um, does that open up an attack? I still don't think so. What it does do is it makes sure that we have, like, an actual decent block. Like, if I attack with Pyromancer here, um, I'm going to be really hard-pressed to block with the Tarmogoyf. Like, if, if I attack with Goyf and then they Lava Dart, Lava Dart, Pyromancer, I'm not really wanting to block with this Goyf, so I don't think an attack is quite good. But if they if they attack, I think now I'm at the point where I may I may want to actually risk a double block. Luckily, three of their soul scars are already gone, so actually shrinking a goyf is unlikely. And as I say that, here's the fourth one, right? Another land. Happy to see that. And they've got seven lands. They got to be like almost out of lands in the deck, right? All right, let's, I think, double block. Is there a reason to, like, block with Pyromancer 2 just to make sure it dies? I don't I don't think there's a way that leaving this out, like, bites me. Like, if they, they could just, like, not cast anything and kill one of my creatures now. But in the off chance, they can, like, kill something. I want to have max possibility of getting their thing dead, too, I think. Bolts me. Bolt me. Jeez, they just like had it all, huh? I'm at one based off of Lava Darts. I've got the push for a hasty creature. It's a lot of triggers. I'm not even going to do the math. I'm just going to see how many of my things survive. I'm assuming I'm going to have one Goyf left. Oh, Pymancer lived too? Sick.
Right on time. <laughs> um, so I think I need to keep the push um, held up in case the opponent has a uh, like a Bowmat Courier or a Swift Spear. Definitely attacking now. And then I need to fade most of the opponent's deck, unfortunately. And then I guess I should play the Liliana, like just just to have it down. I, I can still hold up push, and I'm gonna hold up push. I'm I'm gonna use the secret the secret fourth mode, which is nothing. Yeah, that's fair. Are they? they oh, there's the Swift Spear. Galaxy brain level play. Do we just have him dead? We have Ravine. Yeah, yeah we, we have 11 points, right? Right, this is 5, 6, 7, 11. Did it! <laughs> Winning. And before I click through combat. Jam! Get in there! <laughs> Chomp. Exactly lethal is the best kind, best kind of lethal. Alright. Mono red prowess. Uh, I like brutality a fair amount. We saw that the opponent is playing lots of... Uh, at least one reveler. They're also playing lava darts, which spellbomb can make awkward. Plague engineer dies to about everything, but it does trade, so maybe that's a consideration. And Huntmaster, Huntmaster's real nice, but it's slow. So I'll put the, I'll put it in like the maybe pile. Let's see how much we want to take out. Um, I, I'm definitely going to be wary of Blood Moon. Let's take out Bob's. They, they definitely just get lava darted at, like on site. Let's take out Thought Seizes. Thought Seizes take the um, Bedlam Revelers, but like I feel like Bedlam Revelers probably most potent later in the game and like when the opponent finds one later in the game they're probably pretty likely to just play it the same turn they find it which means Thoughtseize probably isn't touching it anyway so this is my uh my maybe pile these four it's just the question is is there anything here that i think is probably worse than one of these i i could see Huntmaster being better than blood braid blood braid's nice though because like it'll turn the race faster you like the Huntmaster Smirabito? I like them too. Uh, I just, I'm not entirely sure what I should be bringing in for them. It's none of these. Fairly certain of, of that. Um, I could see Kroxa being a cut. Like we already, we're, we already have all of our other threats still in the deck. So maybe like our least sticky threat is one we want to take out. And like these are also like kind of similarly costed, right? Yeah, I like, I like Huntmaster a decent amount. Like four mana makes me nervous. But it, it does something the moment it enters the battlefield, right? Like, uh, people have suggested uh, Kalidus to me, but um, Kalidus doesn't gain life immediately, you know? So, I mean, if I'm, if I'm going to spend four mana on something, I would like it to do something immediately. Do I want other Huntmaster? I think I'm going to bring other Huntmaster over, like, next Blood Braid. Like, I, think, I think Huntmaster might just, on average, be better than Blood Braid. Let's give this a go. I'm going to gonna be wary of Blood Moon. You like this? Me too. <laughs> the difference between a little bit dead and a lot bit dead is nothing. You're still dead. I like that. Oof. I don't like this hand. I think I have to ship. If the opponent has like any creature on one... I, I can fall really, really behind. Like, I have Liliana to answer the first thing, but Crocus just isn't a convincing enough turn to play. This is better. And we, we've even got um, perfect mana in that we can play around the moon. So I think I'm going to go, like, turn one, fetch swamp, turn two, fetch forest, sets up these two plays, and then on three I can black leave cliffs for Liliana. So I'll, I'll, I'll ditch the blood braid just to keep the, the dream one, two, three curve. The opponent has also mulligan. 
All right, there's there's the Swifty Spear. So I'm gonna try to probably take another threat with the Inquisition because um, I'm gonna want the Liliana to be able to Edict onto an empty board. So I think taking additional threats is gonna be what I wanna do. Twenty Geo bug, bug for perfect curve. Ooh, Bolt is nice. Still still gonna play around Blood Moon as I outlined, so let's get basic Swamp for Inquisition. And then take another threat if available. We might even see Blood Moon. It's just stuff. I'm, I think I'm just gonna I'm gonna take the light up the stage. It's it's just the two for one. The the opponent, like at times, like they, they can be a burn deck, but they can also be a critical mass deck, which I guess is bur burn deck kinda is a critical mass deck. So I'm, I'm just going to take the thing that can steamroll the most, I think. And then an interesting question is, do I actually want to just Lightning Bolt the Swift Spear, or do I want to play the Tarmogoyf? I think for Blood Moon considerations, it's probably still safer to play the Tarmogoyf now. Oh god. Alright, so now I think I definitely want a Lightning Bolt. Because, like I said, I want the Liliana to be able to Edict onto an empty board. And then I'll bolt now so prowess triggers don't do anything silly. Oh, another Liliana. I, I'm still going to try to Liliana onto an empty board here. So let's bolt. I guess Soulscar is technically the better creature, so let's kill that. They could have had mutagenic growth to save it there, which would have been unfortunate. But uh, they didn't, so yay. Here's the moon, right? Moon right here is how we lose. Alright, I guess they don't have it because they probably would have used it as a prowess trigger. Alright, forest, Liliana minus. Man, Liliana is so good when Uro isn't bouncing around everywhere all right I, i'm feeling pretty safe from this point we're, we're blood moon insulated the opponent is pretty far off from slamming a bedlam reveler two sources as a matter of fact if they metamorphose into it that'd be annoying but you know it'd be like that or they play to land when the liliana is in play that's curious ravine is nice I think I want to just keep the uh, Liliana in hand. If this one if this one dies, I want to have another removal spell. So let's plus first, ditch a Bloodstained Mire, play a Ravine, play a Tarmogoyf. Uh, they're, they're just flooding at this point. All right, I, I'm feeling good now. Goyf in play, Ravine down, two removal spells loaded up. The good life. Let's draw Huntmaster. We're not winning by enough. Famous last words before I die. I guess they'll flash it back now. No? You, you gonna kill my Liliana or what? Yeah. Watch, this is when they like ensnaring bridge me. Alright, let's let's I I've got the Liliana, but let's let's just try to end this game. Whack. Kiln Fiend. 
All right, well, now I'll kill the Kiln Fiend. It's funny, too, because I think Lava Dart actually kills us with this Kiln Fiend. No, it's one off. This would be seven power, two to us. That puts us to one. Mana Morphos into it would kill us. This actually, I think, was an error. I should have just Fatal Pushed the Kiln Fiend because Bedlam Reveler could be a thing. Three, four, I guess it's not. They don't have spells for it. Did it. All right. Uh, let's do one more for now. We're four matches in at a combined three and one. Oh, I need to get water, right? I did say I would do that. Oof. I'll be back in like 20 seconds. No match paired yet. Thank everyone for coming out today. Got a pretty decent crowd, which is, which is always nice to see. This, of course, will be all uploaded um, to the YouTube channel. All right, we are creating a match. Create Sonkers. Uh, in the modern prelim, I don't usually just because they're pretty pretty pricey on the tickets. Um, do those have? I don't if I forget. Do those have round timers? The opponent revealed Luris. All right, we're we're on the draw versus probably like a version of Shadow or Prowess. I don't think this hand is good versus either of those. It has round timers. Um, I, I, I would have to edit those videos, which is not impossible. Like, I have an editing software right now. I, I think I'm going to mulligan this. Like, Colgun's commands are just way too slow. Bob on the draw with, like, a really painful, like, land system. And we're probably against, like, probably Prowess or Shadow. I think I'm going to ship. Alright, this is better. Um... And then I, I kind of want to just ditch a land here. Is that crazy? Like, against Luris and this hand, I don't think I'm going to need a third land very often. This all does plan on this getting Stomping Ground. Yeah, this this six is good. Grixis Shadow is the guess. Grixis Shadow is a fun matchup. I think it's pretty even. Play draw is definitely uh, a factor. 
Yeah, it does sting. They took K commands? That's the thing I would have suspected the least, to be honest. All right, let's let's get this down, and then uh, if I don't need to uh, use it, I'll get Stomping Ground. Yeah, I mean they th this this could very easily just mean that they've got oh it's Grixis Control. They suspended an Ancestral Vision. Wow, I haven't had that done against me in a long time. Let me tell you, so many windows. Let's just close this one. Yeah, like them taking Kolagon's command um, could just very easily indicate that they've got like a fatal push here. Yeah, Grixis control with Luris. That means no Gurmagingle or Tassiger. Ooh, Crox is a really good draw here. Like it, it's gonna it's gonna pretty effectively have the mana the the opponent's mana going to waste. Although, I think I actually want to play Tarmogoyf anyway. Here's why. Um, I think that the Tarmogoyf... It, I, I, I want this Croxa to be the threat that ends up sticking around the longest, right? So if they're gonna if they're gonna push here, that means that push isn't being used on the Croxa. And furthermore... Oh, it's Rogues. That's cool, too. And, uh, and furthermore... Um, what was I say? Oh, yeah, and... Uh, if, if they're going to have counter spells available, I want to cast the thing into the counter spell that doesn't actually have to stick around. Inquisition. Inquisition's a really nice pickup. Let's just lead there. Yeah, they can't have Jace the Mind Sculptor either. Good spot. There are so many windows. Let me try to organize. Kill that. Rude. Let's just be land land. Alright, we get to take something. Um, Their hand is just land. I mean, I guess if I croak the now... Like, I have the I have the potential to escape it next turn. And I can have them discard their land. Let's croak the. Let's say yes. Croak the. So, untapped land next turn, as long as it isn't basic forest, has us escaping Kroxa, which has has to feel pretty good. They do have an Ancestral Vision coming off soon, but we're a couple turns away from that. So many windows. Let's put this over here. Put that up there. Yeah, it, it's probably just rogues. Alright, that's annoying. Alright, so now that things have death touch, we flipped another croak, so. Uh, I think I'm... If, if I draw the way to escape croaks, I probably still just escape the croaks, uh. Like, that'll have me taking six again, but I can still kill all their stuff. Yeah, standard rogues with modern spice. That's probably a pretty fair way to put it. I think I like playing the Tarmogoyf here. They are at 13, so they have to be a little careful. And, uh... They play counters like Drown and stuff, so I think I'm just gonna pop this now. Like, it's gonna happen anyway. Because I want to use my mana to escape Croak, so when I do find it. Uh, they got a, they've got a vision coming off very soon, though. Oh, Delver? That that would be cool. No block. You could not convince me to block. I'm gonna put, like, Luris in your hand. Alright, Luris in hand. So this is, this is their hand now. Bolt. Bloodbraid. Not exactly. Alright, definitely gonna jam... And I suppose I should just kill this thing now. They're going to draw a bunch of cards. The thing is, I, I might need the Bolt to kill the Luris, though. They're going to have so much to do. It feels bad, but I think I have to wait on this. Vision's going to pop off. They're going up to six cards in hand. It's pretty good. I guess their bottleneck is mana. 
Yeah, Ancestral Vision is, is pretty powerful if you can actually get it off before you die. Yeah, like, I would love to just bolt this uh, Guild, Guild Enforcer. But, um, I might need it to kill Luris. There's the Luris. All right, I I have to let this trigger, right? Because I want to kill the untapped one. Or I guess it doesn't matter because I'm killing Luris. All right, so let's just let this resolve. All right, um, if we can find untapped land and then Bloodbraid hits any removal spell will be golden. Or I can just decay that and hit, get in for five again. It's gonna be close. This is no longer accessible. We've got Blood Braid, which is also a lethal threat. We might even just like hit a burn spell off the top, but I mean, we need to land for it. Delta, uh-huh. Cling a Croxa, gain three, brutal. You know, like cling the other Croxa. I mean, if that's their whole turn, that's like not the worst thing that could happen. I've got something to spend my mana on anyway. Can you shrink my glyph? I don't think so. They're not, they're not adding anything unique. Can we get untapped land, please? Please, please, please. We have three lands used already. They've not milled very many lands. Only one, two, three, four. Here are three. That's seven. That means we've got... Not three Raging Ravines, so 13 untapped lands have us in a good spot of just winning. Come on, deck. Boom. And I think I'm just going to get Mountain here to conserve life. I've got all my colors. Alright, any, any removal has us winning here. Cold Guns Command, that'll do it. Um, let's return Blood Braid, pop the Thieves Guild Enforcer. Sick. Alright, so Blue Black Rogues, pretty interesting. Uh, they're playing Luris, so Spellbomb probably just fine. Um, they are a, a Rogues tribal deck, at least from what I've seen. If we if our, if our graveyard is stocked, the Engineer doesn't actually get to kill the 1-1 one, one Death Toucher, because it'll just enter as a 3-2. Huntmaster's probably good here. It, it's pretty expensive to just have it be countered, which is unfortunate. But if it resolves, it's probably a house versus their 3-2s. Their I think Brutality is also probably excellent, right? Like they're, We saw they're playing Archmage's Charm, they're playing like Fatal Pushes, they're playing Drown in the Lock, so like the, the, there seem to be a few relevant modes on this. What do I want to take out? I think I'm taking out Thought Seizes. I think uh, Brutality just like does that job slightly better. They're playing main deck Klings. Maybe that's a reason to cut on Kroxas. It's like shave one. I mean, the rest seems pretty great. Um, it, it's possible Liliana just isn't what we want it to be. Um, the opponent has lots and lots of flash creatures, and Liliana is going to be pretty weak versus those. It's it's actually the, the Huntmasters have actually been doing pretty well so far, Rojo. Um, the this particular league, they not league. This particular like series of matches this is the fifth match in uh, the Mana Trader series. Um, they haven't like stood out. 
But it, in the most recent league that I played them in, they did they did pretty well. Not to say something wouldn't be better, but they they were definitely very very manageable. Um, and I think I'm gonna take out like a threat here. This is a lot of threats. I don't want to just be choked on threats and not interaction. So I think I'm gonna take out. one bob just because we're on the draw yeah i i think i think huntmaster is probably um the best four mana creature i don't know that four mana creatures is, is where we want to be but assuming you want to play a four mana creature i think huntmaster is is probably one of the better ones <laughs> this is what i just said i didn't want to get too choked on threats and not have any interaction here's only threats I think I have to ship. This is way too slow. Like, we need lands for this hand to be good, and lands just aren't good draws. I think I'm keeping this. We've got Inquisition Bolt. Any second land of this hand becomes very strong. And then I'm just going to ditch the thing that's really expensive to play. We've already got a second one anyway. So, really hoping for a land here. Do I own Jund in paper as well? Yes. I had I had it in paper before I had it on online. I, I own most of the deck online, and then what the pieces that I don't own, like the more recent ones, like Renin Six and Pyromancer, those are um rented from mana traders. Oh let me not yield. I almost yielded through my turn. Alright, let's say yes. Inquisition. got snare drown cling all right well I'm not very worried about cling right now it's got to be like drown or snare i guess snare more eff efficiently answers what i'm trying to do so let's take that then they've got this vision over here chilling yeah i i uh, i've only had um online jund for I want to say like a year or so. Actually, I, I got into um, Magic Online Jund land, damn it, um, because I wanted to practice for a, um, a Star City Games Regionals, and it paid off because I actually won the whole thing. So that was that was about a year ago, but I, I've been playing like actual Jund since the banning of Splinter Twin, so five-ish years, maybe six. Uh, we are currently three and one and up a game. All right, Laris in hand. Lands. There we go. All right, so if it's between Tarmogoyf and Dark Confidant, we took Liliana out, right? So I guess I'll get Stomping Ground because I want second red for Pyromancer. Um, if it's between the two, I suppose it's Dark Confidant because we're going to force the opponent to answer it on their turn and then maybe I can sneak in a Pyromancer through the Drown. Clings the Inquisition. Maybe they were just trying to hit a land drop. Lands, please. Cool. See Bob flip the land. Yeah, Bob Bob was not long for this world. Let's say yes. And I am going to discard Tarmogoyf and Kroxa, I believe. We can escape Kroxa as early as next turn. This is gone. Um if we find the land. Damn, we're like a turn off from uh, the spell bomb catching the Luris. All right, well, here comes the Ancestral Vision, the opponent going up to seven cards here. Brutal. Yeah. 
You got options. What do you want to do with them? And uh, our Kroxa, assuming we can escape it, cannot get drowned, right? Because we're going to be exiling cards from our yard in order to cast it. And there it is. I think we're just leading on it. They, they could have Archmage's Charm, which would be pretty annoying. But if we do nothing here, they're almost definitely going to just cling it. And then we never have this opportunity. Like, they've got to have a counter spell here. And a leak. Yeah, that works. Uh, we're not going to pay three. Yeah, it still empties the graveyard, which which has some equity on its own. I don't think I'm attacking with elementals because they could they could very easily have the um, the flash thing. Actually, I guess I should have right because my graveyard's so small that they don't they're not actually big yet. All right, well I guess that's a reason to uh, not attack with elementals. So I accidentally made a good play. <laughs> won't won't pretend to take the credit for that one. I mean we've got blood braid blood, blood braid and blood braid. Although I, I still think I might want to if they play Luris. Cast the spell bomb. <laughs> you want to feed my Laris, please? Untapped land wouldn't even be that bad here. That's interesting. I'm wondering if maybe I should fatal push this now. Like, I could obviously blood braid here, which is probably one of the better things to cast into open mana. But they've got Luris in their hand and they're not casting. They've got four cards still as well. I think I really want this Nile spell bomb to resolve. I, I think I'm going to uh, hold the Blood Raids for future turns and just like try to cast these spells. Black. This can get drowned, but if they drown it, hopefully that sneaks in my Spell Bomb. You may choose new targets. That's bad for me. Alright, I guess they're just killing an Elemental. That's, that's cool tech. I've never actually had that cast against me. Does this resolve? Nope. Alright. Well, Luris is going to do the thing. Maybe. They don't know that we don't have another answer, but... Doing this line may suggest that we, that we don't. Yeah, it's rough. They they had an ancestral vision pop off. They were they were up a few resources. They're they're down the three again though. Like our hand is probably better than their hand, but they's got Luris. It kind kind of funny that every time they want to attack with the the soaring thought thieves, they're like fueling Kroxa potentially, unless they want to use a turn clinging. I mean, but like now now is now is a plenty good time to start jamming blood breeds. We found the bolt. All right, let's try to kill your thing. Open up some attacks, maybe. Snapcaster, rough. Redirect, oh God. Kill my Pyromancer, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, do I want to attack with Blood Braid? I don't think so. And I think I'm just playing this. Like, I, I want all of my mana. Let's play this. Yep. The Snubcaster was very good. Redirect has, has looked really impressive. It's kind of kind of cool. I haven't seen that one in a long, long time. Never been cast against me. What do I got on top? If they attack with Snapcaster, I'll block it. Spell two, yep. Oh, another spell bomb. Luris time? 
Yep. Bobble, yep. So they're just caring about total cards instead of just like playing Jace, for example. So I, I can't kill anything until I kill Luris. I could Kroxa. But like Kroxa can't even attack really because they'll just like throw stuff in front of it and then recast it. So I think I'm going to Blood Braid here and really hope to hit removal and hope they don't have a way to interact with that removal. Hit Decay. Decay would be best. Right, Kroxa. Not great. Now, now I'm kind of wishing I had kept this. Draw two. Yeah, I, I am just way, way behind now. Like, I, I need to hope the opponent basically floods and that I can find a, an answer to their Lara sooner rather than later. Not attacking. Feeling dead at this point. Not that that fatal push particularly matters. So what needs to happen now? I, I think I need to find like a Colgon's command, kill Luris, buy something back, but there's not even a thing I can play play at the moment. Yeah, we're dead. There goes there goes the decay and the push. Okay. All right, to game three we go. Still against rogues. On the play, do I want Liliana's? I, I still think it's kind of awkward versus... Um, the flash stuff but it's probably one of the better ways to deal with things like Luris really don't know I, I think this is probably just fine I think even on the play I'm gonna bring in this other dark confidant and then on the draw sorry on the play what, what should I take out? I think another threat somewhere. Engineer hits all their creatures. It doesn't kill their creatures though. Like it, it still only trades. Like I, I don't think Plague Engineer is, is ever going to be good enough if it doesn't actually kill anything. I think the exception to that would be Eldrazi Tron when you need it to kill something because nothing else in your deck does. But like pushes and bolts like have not very hard time. I almost want to cut a Tarmogoyf, and I think I will, as crazy as it sounds. Like, all of the removal touches all of my creatures, so I think I'm just going to take out a generic beat stick and keep all the things that have the potential of multi for winning. Let's go first. Please give me a Keeper Magic Gods. Yeah, this is acceptable. We'll keep. More likely than not going to be cycling the Forgotten Cave. 
Um, we've got the Inquisition on one, which is going to be pretty nice because the opponent might have their Ancestral Vision. And then we can Bob on two. Hopefully they don't have Ancestral Vision and removal because I would really love to not have to face either and land this Bob. All right, well, they only have one Ancestral Vision, so let's take it. No removal either, so this Bob, this Bob might actually get to do its thing. Watery Grave tapped. Uh-huh. Not lands, please. That's a better than most lands land. Uh, mountain, Dark Confidant. Go. Gonna be careful of not attacking into the Thought Thief. That's a new pickup. So they have one unknown. Cool. Alright, so now we can actually attack. I think I will. And then I can play Ravine, plan on cycling this Forgotten Cave. Who could have ever seen this coming? And then I'll cycle the Forgotten Cave at the opponent's end step. All right, so now they have Archmage's Charm available. But Bob, Bob does really well when, when you want to push through counters. You just keep drawing gas. Just throw more stuff at them than they can handle. All right, well, obviously, drawing, drawing lands is, uh, is not the gas I was attempting to speak of. All right, so do I want to attack here? There's only one unknown. What are the odds? It's like another thought thief, or it's an X, or it's the one one. I think I I am going to attack. It's the odds that the one card I don't know about are that, one the cards that I know about being that are low, and like the damage could actually end up mattering. All right, so let's Croxa here. I expect the Archmage's Charm to be a draw too. Two unknowns they played island. Oh, did I track that wrong? Yeah, I gotta keep up with that. Thank you. Luck luckily it didn't bite me. I mean, even even not knowing two cards, I still think I want to attack, but it is it is more nerve-wracking doing so. Alright, and I think I'm gonna play fetch land here as opposed to like one of these. Because fetch and fetch means I can have the option of escaping croaks the next turn. Unlikely to do it just because. The opponent has access to counters that we know of. But I mean Bob Bob is is doing doing the work. Never mind. Past tense, Bob was doing the work. And I think I'm still going to go for the escape on Kroxa anyway. Inquisition would be a pretty fantastic draw. Just so I can hopefully sneak the Kroxa through. Alright, well, lands are not what the doctor ordered. I'm thinking I want to fetch before casting Kroxa because I want to keep good. I want to keep Dark Confidant in the graveyard for Kolagon's command. Gonna have to stop drawing lands though. Play land to represent Vale. They're they're countering this no matter what. The, I don't think I don't think that's a very um I, I don't think that's a good bluff because they're gonna do it no matter what, so what does it matter? Alright, let's keep the bob. So we are up two resources from the Dark Confidant. Unfortunately, we've just been drawing a bunch of lands in between. Here comes a charm. 
probably. Yep. We've got Ravine still. There is an ancestral vision. Oh boy. You put like Laris into your hand too? Alright. Alright, well, they're giving us a window to smack with Ravine. Not a land, please. Give me like a blood braid. Yes! There's the kicker. Or I guess the cascader. Let's hit a goif. Bolt. Not great. I mean they're pretty low now. We're attacking him to four. Which means a single blood braid is a lethal hit. Or a single uh ravine, my bad. Um two cards in yard. If I fetch that's three. Let's just get the stomping ground down. We've got the pulse to deal with the Luris. We needed that blood braid there. That blood braid was huge. Give me another one. All right, they haven't. They're not doing anything. Interesting. That's a good draw because I was really afraid of a snapcaster here. Like if we activate a ravine and they go like snap push my thing, I get sent back to the stone age. Whereas at least this will tell us if we have the ability to activate Ravine. This also takes Luris if we if we want it to. There's the Snapcaster, sure enough. They can only target a push, so not activating a ravine here. What you got? More stuff. All right, well, I think Luris is the best stuff, so let's take that. Like, whatever I take here, they're just going to Luris it back. So they've got Fatal Push active only right now. Like, I, I, I kind of want to pulse just to put cards in the yard. Is an attack here good? An attack would put the thing in the graveyard. I mean, I guess the, the, their, their attacks are even awkward, right? The thing is, I do want to end this game before this vision pops off. If, if I pulse the Snapcaster to attack, they'll just push the Blood Braids. So that's not really a play. So I guess I'll go Verdant here. Because then drawing another fetch means I can escape Kroxa. I'm not going to attack. They just trade. Alright, so that Inquisition was timely. I think I would not, not be forced to activate the Ravine in attack, but it would have been really, really bad had we done that gonna be close they don't have a push currently they have Th thieves guild enforcer and soaring thought thief both of which have flash i mean we can also pulse now and that'll get croaks in to play which will have them losing three because i'm assuming they're going to want to flash both of their things in Ooh, that was good. I still think I want to pulse into Kroxa though. Like if I Pyromancer here, I can't also do Kroxa. I guess I could, but I'd have to ditch the pulse. I don't think I want to ditch the pulse. I think I want to uh, pulse this, and because then when I attack here, one of the things has to block. So this this all seems this all seems good. Let's just make sure I don't like tap out of being unable to cast Kroxa. So if I make this black, I'll have. Red, black, yeah, oh, this will be good. I think this is way better, though, because this has Kroxa in play.
Like, we know their hand is two creatures. If they flash both of them in, um, Kroxa, um deals three to them, and then they have to trade with the Blood Braid, and that all just seems very good for me. Like, if we ravine here, they can flash in and block, and I haven't advanced the board at all. And then, like, we, we, we get to the point where the game might go long enough where Ancestral Vision pops off, and then they could bury me. I think I just really want to, like, pedal to the metal, get them dead, as opposed to playing a resource game at this point. Yep, hadn't even thought of that. It takes Death Touch out. Alright, so that's gone. Their, their, their Enforcer is also just a 1-1, one, one, right? So this Blood Braid just has a really excellent attack. Put you to 1. Land go. Alright, and I did mention we wanted to get them dead before the vision popped off, and we're, we're one turn ahead of it. What's your one last card? Alright, not, nothing good enough. Alright, so, um, let's do a quick deck tech slash wrap up for purposes of the recording. I'm going to hang out for a little while afterwards, but this is getting recorded for my YouTube channel. So I'm going to do a quick wrap up for, for the recording. So we played five matches and we are four and one. Pretty good. Um, we took wins to... Amulet Titan, Eldrazi Tron. Um, we then lost to. I don't remember. I don't remember. Oh, we, we lost to Red Green Ponza. Then we beat Mono Red Prowess. And then we beat Blue Black Rogues, which everyone who's here just saw. So overall, pretty good so far. Um, I, I think all of these matchups are, are probably just fine from the Jun side. I do, I do really think. The amulet matchup, which was this opponent, is is even to favored. There are lots of really good sideboard cards, and Goyf is a really big threat that gets big quickly and can attack um, off the back of like Inquisitions and Thought Seizes. Um, I think we got mildly lucky versus the old Drazi Tron player. Um, I, I was able to take all of their Mattery Shapers with like Hand Disruption and the like, and uh, by the time they could get their Karns down, um, I, I had hasty Blood Braids to uh, smack them down. Against the Ponza opponent, we got Blood Moon, and then uh, they, they, they top-decked a Glorybringer for the win uh, in Game 2. Uh, against this opponent who played... I forget. I, I mentioned it a second ago, but I'm already forgetting. Against this opponent, we obviously 2-0'd. Uh, anyone, anyone in chat remember it offhand, what we played, not this round, the last round? Prowess, thank you. We played against Mono Red Prowess. I appreciate it, Jadex. Um, we, we got, <laughs> they actually got lucky and top decked their Reveler, which we, I thought I was going to lose to, but they ended up getting us to one after drawing Bolt into Bolt into Lava Darts in the yard. So we were, sta we stabilized at one, which was pretty scary. And then versus that Rogue's opponent, um, I think the important thing is that, uh, I, I needed to take the beatdown roll and in, in order to erase the Ancestral Visions and it, it, it paid off. So, uh, against all of those matchups... All of my removal spells were usually relevant, which is a good feeling. Um, I, I really enjoy formats when removal is actually good. So uh, I think that's where we're at right now, at least these five matches. Um, all, all of my removal was good, at least most of the time. And uh, pick, picking spots for to make, to make sure that you've got everything covered is, I think, pretty important. Like, like for example, versus the amulet player, um, I needed to... Um, not use lightning bolts and actually no that's not true I use lightning bolts first because I needed the pushes to kill the things that like like dryad that bolt doesn't kill so I think as long as you are aware of like what are the important threats you need to be killing you'll you'll know how to line up your various removal spells um, Kroxa continues to impress me this card has been absolutely amazing I think I've I think I think this was a key player in like six or seven of our ten game wins in these past five matches. Um, Goyf, I think, is also just quite excellent right now. Uh, I am still a huge proponent of not playing Ren and Six and instead playing Dark Confidant. I just, I just really don't think Ren and Six is that well positioned. I think Ren and Six is good when the minus one 
um, can kill stuff at least uh, some amount of the time, and there just really isn't a whole lot um, that that Ren and, Six, Ren and Six is killing. Additionally, uh, versus control and um, and combo opponents, I think it's really important for Dark Confidant to be able to find you additional pieces of disruption, be it removal or discard. Um, and we saw versus control. I think had we had Ren and Six instead of Dark Confidant, I think we would have handily lost because Dark Confidant can find us the gas to push through multiple counter spells, whereas Ren and Six will never do that without dumping mana into cycling a bunch of lands. Um, the Colgon's commands have continued to be fine. I still like those. Again, Season Pyromancer has been the card that has impressed me the least. Um, but I mean, it's a nice, it's a nice rummager slash filterer. So I mean, it, it, it kind of ties everything together, but I, I would not be at all upset to see this card go. Um, Pulse has been fine. The Lilianas have been so good. Liliana has like pretty often been my best card and I always love it when, when Dark Confidant and Liliana get to pair up and, uh, and run the, and run the, uh, the resource game. Uh, for, uh, I guess thoughts on the sideboard, the spell bombs have been more than fine. They're my only piece of graveyard hate right now, so I'm kind of leading, leaning heavy on them, but they've, they've, they've held up to the task so far. Um, I like the split of three Cleansing Wildfire, two Damping Sphere. Uh, I had some people suggest to me that maybe I should be playing fourth Cleansing Wildfire before first copy of Damping Sphere. I still think I like Damping, Square, Damping Sphere more than fourth copy of Wildfire. I think Damping Sphere is a lot better versus Amulet Titan and also versus Storm, obviously. Um, and I expect to see a lot of Storm and Amulet Titan right now. And we played against Amulet Titan round one and the Damping Sphere did excellent because the, the opponent top decked a, um, a Castle Garen Brig and that would have been their sixth mana to slam their Titan, but they tapped their Garen Brig and made a single colorless and realized that Sphere beat them. So I, I still like the Spheres. Um, the Plague Engineer, I think, has been my least impressive sideboard card. That said, it still has been pretty good, which is, I, I think it, I'm in a good spot if I can say my least impressive sideboard card has still has still performed as intended. And uh, the Huntmasters. The Huntmasters have actually been pretty good. Um, I think if you're going to pick a four mana creature to play out of the sideboard, Huntmaster is probably one of the better ones. Um, a, a few suggestions people have suggested to me have been things like Kalidus, Trader of Get, and... Um, the reason I don't like that one is because it's a 3-4 lifelink, which is good, but um, it doesn't do anything the turn it comes down. Huntmaster at least generates multiple bodies and uh, gains life when it comes in, so I think that immediate value puts it ahead of Kalidus. For a similar reason, I like it over Obstinate Bailoff. You get less life, but you get two bodies, and Bailoff doesn't do anything after it comes in. It's just a 4-4, four -four, whereas Huntmaster like, is a looming threat that has to be dealt with. And the, I, I've gotten a few other suggestions. Um, I don't think anything over four mana is ever going to be viable. But if you're going to want to spend four mana on something, I think Huntmaster is probably a fine place to be. So that's going to be it for this recording. Thanks all for tuning in. And you can, of course, catch all my past content um, on my YouTube channel. And all of that information is right here below my head. So if you're watching here on YouTube, don't forget to like and subscribe and comment. Let me know what you think and how you think I could improve. And until next time, jump them out.